Hi guys, my name is Daniel. I am a professional service engineer with Jamf and I'm going to be showing you how to build a Windows SCEP server as well as a Windows AD certificate server that can be used with either uh, Wi-Fi profiles, VPN or whatever you'd like. So we'll jump right over into our Windows server here. Uh, this is brand new, completely clean. I have installed Active Directory on this, although I have some users here. Just sign up myself there, but other than that, it's completely clean. So, once we uh, have a Windows server in place, before we can actually configure any of these services that we want to use, the two services we're going to be looking at. One is going to be SCEP, and the other will be AD Certificate Server. For a SCEP server to work, we do need a service account created. So if I go into my users account in here, I'll go new. The service for SCEP is actually under a, um, a protocol called NDES, and uh, we'll just give this the name for NDES there as well. So NDES underscore user. Give it a password. Nice and secure. I will say can't change and never expires. Finish. Now this user here needs to be a member of two groups. It needs to be a member of IIS users, or ISSI users, as well as I found it needs to be a domain admin. And we go apply. So now that we have our service account, we can go ahead and look at building our AD certificate. So before we can do that, we go into our server manager here. We're going to go into manage, and we're going to add roles and features. We go next, and we're going to add a role-based feature pick our server, you can see I've already got domain services configured, but I'm going to tick Active Directory Certificate Servers and I'm going to go Add Feature. Go Next, I don't need to add any sub features in here. Once I've selected the ADCS, I then need to take on what services within this role do I want to enable. So the Network Device Enrollment Service, or NDES, would be used for SCEP. And we'll take all those. And the other one we have is Certif Certification Authority Web Enrollment. This is used for a tool like, say, Nomad or Enterprise Connect, where the device goes and queries against the server to get its own certificate based on, say, user template. So we'll take those two and we'll go next. Next, leave it all as the defaults. And we'll go install. Now, depending on the speed of your server, this is a VM here, so it could take some time. So I'll just give it a wait here. I might actually stop the recording so you'll see this jump ahead. Okay, now that we're back, we've got the features of finished installing, so we can go close. Get a little caution up in here. Even though the feature is installed, we still need to configure it. So we configure Active Directory services here. So we'll install this as the administrator. We're going to tick Certificate Authority first, Certification Authority first. We need to configure this before we can go back and configure anything else. We'll go an Enterprise CA. It's going to be a root CA because this is a brand new. We're going to create a new private key as well. You can define your cryptography in here. Um, I'll leave this as the defaults just for simplicity, but you can always go back in here and configure as you need. Uh, certificate uh, validity, five years. Default locations, configure. Close that, and it'll ask us do we want to configure additional role services? We do, because we have a couple other tick boxes we need to go through. Let's go next. We'll configure the certification authority web enrollment. We'll go next and configure. That one's very easy. The last one is our SCEP component, or our network device enrollment service. So we'll take this one here. We go next, and this is where it's going to ask us for our service account, and this is our NDES user that we made. So select this. We'll sign in as that user. It's happy with that. We go next, and now it's going to ask us for some information. So I'm in Australia, so I can put in my information here, but you can update this for your information here. All this other stuff is optional if you wanted to. So you can say email, you can say, okay, info at jfpro.services. 
company, Jamf, department. So this is city. I'm in Sydney, same province, New South Wales. Go next, next, configure. Done. So now if we go to our administrative tools here, we can see we have certification authority here. Inside this, we can see any issued certificates. There's only three that have been done for the exchange enrollment and CEP. You can see our certificate templates. I've got a few in here. The IPsec one is what is used for SCEP. And we'll use the user one for the example when we're talking about Nomad. Now, if you want to make any changes to these, to make duplicates or whatever, you'd right click on certificate templates, go manage. And you can see there's a lot more there. So we can say, okay, there's our IPsec one. You can see there's a the security. You can see our NDS user there is allowed to enroll. That's what's handling that as our service account. We can see for our user one here, security, we can see, okay, authenticated users can read, domain users can enroll. What I found is to make this a little easier for the um, video type thing, I'm going to also turn on domain users can read, as well as that authenticated users can enroll as well. I'll go okay for that. Now, the other component that we'll need to do for, let's say we're using Nomad or Enterprise Connect, that'll uh, want to query this server over SSL or HTTPS. By default, however, that is not turned on. So we need to actually go into our IIS manager. We expand out our server, look in our sites and right click on our default website. We can edit the bindings. We see it's only listening on HTTP. So what we can do is we can add onto this and we can change this to be HTTPS. We're gonna pick uh, our self-signed certificate. So this is from our certificate authority there. I wanna go okay. If you're unsure if you have two there, you can go back and you can view them. So you have a private key that corresponds to this. So you're okay, if as well as we change this one here. Oh. Private key for this one there. Look at your val validity. You can see actually that one there was issued by that. As we look at this one here, that is the root issued to by. So we might as well use the root one there. So we'll go okay, we'll go close. And the last thing you need to do is back up to the top there and you'll restart the service. Now that's just the Windows side. That's all we need to worry about the Windows side there. So if I jump over onto my Mac, I have this Mac here is enrolled in my Jamf server. Jamf.jamf Pro, it's on the same subnet. If I open up Safari, if I go to another website here for me and I go HTTP colon slash slash win dash DC01 Jamf Pro services. If I just leave that, I get my default IIS website. The two locations that we're basing this off, we need to actually require or define where the actual uh, path is. So this is under cert SRV. Now you'll see here we're requesting a certificate there. That's because I've just done this on HTTPS. I can always trust this, continue. I'm prompted to sign in. This would be any Active Directory user. So I can say my username that I created there. I can choose a request a certificate and there's my user certificate there. For an mSCEP, so this is another way to SCEP, uh, for your SCEP component, a way to test that, you would append this with mSCEP there and you should get a page. You'll see there's an admin page that is specific. Even though I've authenticated, I don't actually have permission and I need to actually use the endes user to see this because that is the only one that's been given permission. So that looks like it's working pretty well. But let's test it a little bit further. So if I jump into my Jamf server here for me, 
and I make a configuration profile. So I can go new. I'll say this is skep test. Go to the skep payload here, configure. So the URL, this is the base URL for the skep server. So this is actually not the admin, but rather this path here. Now we're going to do this over HTTP. I'm going to copy this, paste this in here. So it's HTTP colon slash slash your FQDN. Oh slash cert srv slash msket. You actually have to do an appendage at the end of this and you go mskep.dll. The name of the instance. Now we would have seen that when we were making our, uh, going through the setup wizard for that. That's basically always going to be your server host name. So win dash dc01, going to be dash ca because it's turned on a ca. And then it's actually going to be always after this mskep-ra. We can put in a subject. This is actually what's going to be injected into the certificate request. So you see, it's you don't have to put something in here. You could put something static like my laptop. But what I find is easier, especially if you want to be replicating this, you take advantage of the payload variables. So we'll do cn equals dollar computer name comma o equals jam. So the cn is the computer record and they're going to embed in the computer name based on the payload variable comma notice there's no spaces there o stands for the organization equals jam. We'll leave the subject alternative name blank the challenge type. So if it's a static challenge that's where we can go back to our admin we see we have an enrollment challenge password. That is what that static password would be. But you'll notice this is only going to be valid for 60 minutes. And every time you refresh this page, it changes. Once five have been generated, it then times out for an hour. Now, as many can use that static password in, within that hour. So if you have a mass upload type thing, then you can do, look at doing that there. If, however, you're going to be having devices enrolling at different times, you can't really control this you would look at using one of the other challenge types would be dynamic Microsoft CA. Now this requires that the Jamf server can communicate to the certificate server. The static does not. The static just basically puts the profile down with the password and the device then communicates to the Windows server directly. For the dynamic Microsoft CA, it needs to be all three talking. So the URL for the SCEP admin, we have that here. So we can just copy that, paste that in. Be sure to leave the trailing slash. Our username, so we put in our service account, and as user, and the password. Generally, you shouldn't have to worry about anything else in here, but you can look at fine tuning it if you need. Once you're happy with all the information is set correctly, we go to our scope, I'm gonna add it to my machine here, as I said, I can show here, we do not have the profile. If I go save, I'm going to check it on the dashboard. Let's see how it's running. It can sometimes take a little bit of time, because as I said, this Jamf server needs to communicate to the Windows server. Got a green completion. Got a skip test there, which is perfect. I open up my keychain access. And under my system, under my certificates there, you can see there's my test. If I jump over onto my Windows server here and I go back to my certificate authority and I look at my issued certificates, I can see there's a new one there. Makes it a little bit bigger. That's who authenticated it because we're using that service account. You see that's the template that was used. If I double click on this to view it, you can see that it was issued to Daniel's test details on it there. You see there's a subject, cn equals dynamics test, yo equals jamf. 
So as I said, you could go back into the SCEP thing if you were using something based on, say, a VPN or a Wi-Fi that was using SCEP as a configuration. So let's say, okay, security type could be enterprise. Maybe they're using TLS, and the identity certificate could be that there. That is something that the network component would need to be configured for as well. Great. So if we were looking at uh, using leveraging a tool like Enterprise Connect or Nomad, we can, this can actually run separate from the Jam server, so we don't actually need this for the moment. So I can close this, and I will close Keychain for the moment. So I don't have Nomad installed. Nomad is not installed, so let's go and install it here. So I follow the steps. Going to uh, enter in my details here. Now you can configure this with a profile or anything else like that as well. Have a look on nomad.menu's help page for more information on that. So my Active Directory domain, which is jamfpro.services. Now for this to actually work, the end client machine, so my Mac here as an example, will need to be speaking to my Windows server for DNS. But you'll also notice this machine is not bound. So Jam Product Services, the Kerberos RAM will fill in itself. The X509CA, that is our Windows server. So if we go win-dc01 dash jamfpro.services, the template we're going to use is user. You can also use to say, okay, I'm going to use the keychain and I can show the home folder. So we get a little triangle up there, and I'll be prompted to sign in. Before I sign in, if I try and connect to win-dc01.jamfpro.services, say I try and access my home folder, prompts me for authentication. However, if I sign in here, Should get a green tick, which is great. I can go home SharePoint there. That mounts it straight away. The way that it's doing this is because it's using a Kerberos ticket. So I go to my ticket viewer, you see there's a ticket there. The other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to go to get certificate. Please ensure your certificate authority settings are correct. Sorry about that guys, I accidentally hit the stop button. So Certificate settings are correct. If I look at my preferences here, they are correct. I did make one change, which is what I added the system uh, self-signed certificate, that uh, Jamf Pro Win DCCA. I've moved that into the system keychain here now. So I go back to my login here now, and I go back to this, and I say get certificate. I should see, there it is there, my name appearing, grabbed from Nomad there. So I could use this, again, completely separate from Jeff, but if I go to my Wi-Fi and I pick a 802.1x network that supports EPTLS, you'll see there is my name there. Daniel's test is also available there as my skip. This here, to confuse people, is your Jamf uh, signed certificate. So there's machine certificate there. So you just tell people to pick their name or their machine and away they go. If you've got any questions, please reach out to me via email or HipChat. I will. I am no way an expert on this. I just found trying to build these up, it was easier to have a video to follow. Thanks very much for watching, and good luck.